Humans like growth. Even if it's just a little a day, it's the idea that you're bigger or better than you were yesterday. I don't mean physically, that isn't always good. But as a YouTuber, it's nice to see your stats going up and stuff. But that isn't always enough. You want for your growth to grow. To go from gaining 400 to 600 subscribers a day is great. You feel as though you're going to the moon. Then 600 subscribers a day becomes the norm and suddenly, 400 a day feels bad. But all of this is still growth. What if you were to start losing subscribers faster than you gained them? It's something you know will happen one day, but you hope it won't be today. You like to think that you're one of those special people who rockets to the top of YouTube and remains there, but you probably aren't. And now a lot of CSGO YouTubers are in this situation. Last month they might have had 500,000 subscribers, now 490,000. It's still a great number, don't get me wrong, but for them, that's no solace. I feel that I peaked in 2015, I didn't. My channels have been growing ever since and in 2017 I even received more views than ever before. But mentally, for me, 2015 was the peak. It just felt so easy to grow back then, and exciting to explore both CSGO and YouTube. CSGO was an up and coming game, I was one of the lucky YouTubers to ride that growth wave as it catapulted my channel, and many others, to sizes that none of us could have expected. This is largely down to luck, about being in the right place at the right time and with the right kind of skill set. But it's appealing to think that it's all your own doing, that you drove that growth, and you alone. But that puts you in a difficult position when your channels start to shrink. Suddenly, your tried and tested video making formula isn't working quite as well as it once was. You begin to reminisce fondly about times when your channels were doing better, even if, at the time, you took it largely for granted. CSGO and associated channels are now shrinking. They're still an impressive size, but it's evident that CSGO is no longer the cool trend. And with this, the enthusiasm of the community has dwindled when you compare it to, say, the hype that the likes of Player Unknowns or Fortnite benefit from right now. I really have to emphasize this. Your mental state changes as the game you love stops growing. We all have different ways of dealing with this. The CSGO community is quick to blame Valve for why the game doesn't feel exciting anymore. But really, I think they must know that's not the case. People look back with rose-tinted glasses at when they enjoyed the game the most and think that if it were to return to how it was back then, then it would be like the old days again. Of course, it's not that simple. Those days have gone. If you're no longer enjoying CSGO, perhaps it's not the game's fault. Maybe it's you. And as for CSGO YouTubers, I started seeing it last year and it's only gotten worse. The moment a channel starts failing, it fails fast. What seems like a bad month becomes a trend, and before you know it, view counts are plummeting and they're backtracking on all of the subscriber milestones they once surpassed. And you can see the sort of impact it has on the YouTuber. They announce breaks, they knee-jerk change their content, which only makes things worse. Some even cry out for help, not sure how everything went so wrong. But you're not necessarily doing anything wrong. It might just be a natural stage in the life of a niche YouTuber. When people think of becoming a YouTuber, they aim to become the next PewDiePie. The biggest, the best. Why would you aspire to be anything less? It's not enough to have an audience, you need all the audience. But although it may be less glamorous, a smaller community is a more achievable goal and comes with its own benefits. You won't be expected to change. That is, to lose anything that makes you different or unique in order to appeal to the lowest common denominator. You can specialise on something that you care about and do it well. This is what 3 Clicks Philip is. It's bound to CSGO. That channel can only make content for it, and so is very dependent on how well the game's doing. But 3 Clicks Philip can't jump ship. If I do that, I risk alienating the audience that I do have. Plus, I'm not sure how transferable 3 Clicks Philip's skills are anyway. I suspect that 3 Clicks Philip will stick with CSGO to the bitter end. Waral, on the other hand, made the jump to other stuff a while ago and is suffering the transition. His view count is still healthy, people like viewing his stuff, but he might just have to accept that his content has less of an audience than before, and that it might be a while before his subscriber count reflects the size of his new fan base. Losing subscribers is never nice, but I think it can tell you valuable information about the state of your channel. I think it's important to work out whether these are people unsubscribing because they don't like your content, or if it's YouTube doing some house cleaning, removing old or inactive accounts, etc. Here are three clicks Philip subscribers gained and lost, every month since the beginning of 2014. This nicely reflects how I felt about 2015 being the year of the Philip. It's hard to argue that 2015 was when I gained the most subscribers. Since then, I'm actually surprised that the people unsubscribing to me has remained so few. 
That is, until the last few months. Could Three Clicks Philip see his subscriber count dropping sometime soon? I wouldn't be surprised. CSGO's fanbase has dropped by about 30% in the last two months alone. It's amazing that Three Clicks Philip is still growing by as much as it is. April's subscriber growth was hampered by a sizeable subscriber perch that YouTube likes to do once in a while. It's pretty easy to spot it from the YouTube analytics page. And it's clear that it's not in any way representative of the state of CSGO's community. This blue line represents the 626 closed accounts. Fair enough. But the rest, YouTube tries to disguise as everyday stuff. This green line is apparently the 731 people who, on these two days, just happened to look at their subscriber list and decided to remove me from it. And this purple line is the 693 people who clicked on my channel and then decided to unsubscribe, on these two particular days. Yeah, so I'm not buying that. I'm not saying this is a big conspiracy against me. I'm saying that YouTube does more house cleaning to tidy up old, inactive or fake channels than it lets on to, which will inevitably hurt older, more established channels more than it will hurt the newer ones. It's particularly evident in spikes like this, but I think a certain amount of house cleaning goes on on YouTube every day. It's shown on Social Blade as one big drop for one hour every day. For me, a growing channel, most of the hours are seen as positive growth, which is to be expected. And on a shrinking channel, more hours show as a drop, which is why I suspect the big drop is something other than people just naturally losing interest in the channel. Like I said, YouTube house cleaning. It's important to be able to distinguish between house cleaning and other reasons for subscriber drops. If everybody unsubscribes the moment you release a new video, yes, then it's time to worry. But I've often seen a drop, asked, is this housekeeping? And checked other channels to ensure they have also received a similar drop. And usually they have, or are due for one within a few hours time. If your channel is only shrinking because of this large, single daily sub loss, like War Hours currently is, then rejoice. These accounts that you're losing probably weren't real or current followers anyway, and have only been artificially inflating your subscriber count until now it will likely have little impact on your view count in the long run, as long as you can produce content that keeps your new subscribers happy. Although there's probably a stage after people stop viewing your videos and before they unsubscribe. But that gets complicated. In a way, this house cleaning is a bit like a drawn out version of what we experienced in mid 2016. There was a weird bubble where we started getting a lot more subscribers than normal. Of course, we all just thought it was because we were awesome. But then they were dramatically removed again two months later and we returned back to how we should have been doing. It sucked, but probably didn't change anything. Unless, in those two months, the real followers had grown bored of the content we were churning out because we thought our newfound audience liked it. Let's move on to the first week of May for what an average week without a purge looks like. I gained 3,185 subscribers during this time. That's 455 a day. Very nice for Three Clicks Philip. But I also lost 1,048. Per day, 56 people looked at my channel and decided it was no longer for them and unsubscribed. 38 a day see me in their list of subscriptions and don't even bother clicking on it. They unsubscribe, knowing that they don't want to see my stuff anymore. And 34 accounts are either closed by YouTube or removed for an unknown reason every day. Altogether, I'm losing 150 subscribers a day. That's like 1,000 a week, 4,000 a month, and 50,000 a year. Ignoring new subscribers, I lose just over 7% of my existing audience a year even when I'm producing regular new stuff that's similar to what made them subscribe in the first place. Without new followers, you can see how quickly an older channel can lose its existing fanbase. May's another weird month for me though, since later on in it, I did a subscriber milestone celebration video. This always causes loads of new people to subscribe for some reason, but also leads to a number of unsubs. The pros always outweigh the cons, makes me feel that every video should be a celebration of some sort of subscriber count. Maybe I found a way of breaking the system. Annoyingly, it shows that telling people to subscribe works, as Mr. Sterling found out recently. Honestly though, right now 3 Clicks Philip is outperforming how it should be doing. It's heavily tied to CSGO's player base, and while that's been shrinking, 3 Clicks Philip continues to grow. But for those of you who are losing subscribers faster than you're gaining them, it's not all doom and gloom. Except that you may need to lose some, but as long as you've got a steady supply of new subscribers coming in, then your channel will have an audience left at the end of it. Maybe switching from total subscriber count to benchmarking yourself by new subscribers gained is a silly way of coping with a bad situation. But hey, even YouTube did it when they switched over from view count to watch time. In conclusion, times are hard for CSGO YouTubers who have been spoiled by years of easy growth and views. Losing old subscribers makes it doubly difficult for established YouTubers to increase their subscriber count 
and quadruply so to ever achieve the same subscriber growth boom that they had in the first place. It will take time for their subscriber counts to represent their old channel's newfound audiences, and this correction period will be equally hard on the YouTubers themselves. You can see the negative impact these recent changes have had on their mental states. I see many YouTubers talk about taking breaks. I can empathise with that. Making content year in, year out, you become desensitised. Something you once loved is now a mundane daily task, especially when your view and subscriber count starts dropping. And it's nice to think that getting away from it for a bit will somehow return it to the old days again. Even though, it probably won't. I predicted at the beginning of this year that 2018 could be the year that 2 Clicks Philip overtakes 3 Clicks Philip. For views, at least. I've kept 2 Clicks Philip separate and active for years, as insurance for the day that CSGO fails me, but it hasn't happened yet. 3 Clicks Philip remains surprisingly resilient, and the fanbase, loyal and supportive. I don't think it'll last forever, but while the going is good, 3 Clicks Philip will remain my main channel. However, if any of my channels are to ever reach a million subscribers, I don't think it'll be Three Clicks Philip. It might even be this one.